So today we're going to take a look at math training and zone two training. And I want to tell a little bit about the differences and why one may be better for you than the other. How's it going runners? My name is Justin Thompson. I am your average running PT and I help the average runner achieve their own personal elite status. If that's something you guys are into, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you guys know when the next video comes out. So today we're going to compare math training with zone two training. And both of these are kind of low heart rate style of training and trying to build your aerobic base. So there may be times though when one is better than the other, and maybe not. Uh, I, it's, I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. What I know is that over the course of this, the lifetime of this channel, I've been using Maffetone style training quite a lot, and you guys have uh, probably resonated with that quite a bit as well. So now I'm going to shift a little bit and talk also about zone two training. So there's differences between the two, and one may be a little bit more appropriate for you than the other. So let's talk a little bit about the details. You've got math on one hand and zone two on the other hand, both of which are designed to help you build your aerobic base. Now, they do it a little bit differently, and there's a different kind of a belief within each one uh, about whether... Uh, you should have your heart rate in a slightly higher range or in a slightly lower range. So let's talk about first math training. And I've talked about it a lot on this channel, but just to review. So math training is basically you take the number 180, you subtract your age, and that is your max aerobic function number, your math number, which for me, 180 minus 32 gives me a math number of 148. Now you can live in about a 10 beat per minute kind of a zone. Uh, so 148 and then 10 beats below that 138. So that would be my math zone. Now, of course, if you've been training for a long time, then they give you a little bit of leeway to bump that up just a little bit. So I take my math number from 148 to 153. So I add five beats per minute on that. Um, but I've been trying to keep mine right there at that 148 number. So what's the difference to zone two? So zone two, what you're trying to do is keep your heart rate in about 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. So instead of taking just a kind of a random arbitrary number like 180, you actually have to figure out what is your max heart rate. Now, this is something that is debated and debated and debated whether you need to go and get it actually tested or if you can use a very simple formula like 220 minus your age. Now, the problem with that 220 minus your age is, well, your age is the only thing that's really factoring. But in all honesty, the same thing with math training. You're really only factoring in your age unless you can kind of bump it up or down based on your fitness level. But for simplicity, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use that 220 minus my age number. Now I may get some comments down below, and that's fine. I know that this is not the most accurate method, so I'm going ahead and putting that out there right now. But I do know that when I have gotten my heart rate up really high and, and really was pushing a pace, I know I was getting up there in the high 180s. I may have even hit 190 one time. So the numbers end up kind of working out for me anyway. So if I plug myself into this formula, what I get is 220 minus my age 32. So my max heart rate number is 188. From there, I need to take 60 to 70% to get my zone two numbers. So for me, that 60 to 70% of 188 lands me at 113 beats per minute to 131 beats per minute. So let's compare that to my math zone. So math zone, 138 to 148. Zone two, 113 to 131. As you can see, there's a difference there. There's a significant difference there. You know, you go, you've got a 17 point difference between the max number of zone two and the max number of Mavitone training. 
Now here's the problem that I've had with zone 2 and why I have not been using it, but, it, but I've instead been using math method. When I go from a walk to a jog, there's this really big gap in heart rate where my heart rate just kind of skips over a large chunk of, of space here. For example, when I go for a brisk walk, my heart rate gets up to somewhere around 110 or so, and it gets pretty tough to get it above that 110. Unless, of course, I start jogging, but when I start jogging, that jumps up really quickly to 125, 130, 135, and then it doesn't stay there. It kind of continues to creep up. So for me, going from a walk to a jog, I almost completely skip over zone two entirely. Now, I personally believe that there's a gap in my fitness there, where if I had a better cardiovascular and aerobic base, then I would probably be able to make that jump from a walk to a, to a jog, and I would probably land somewhere in the middle of zone two. But because my cardiovascular base is still work, still building and still working on it, I don't quite have that range of heart rate numbers that I can access with normal everyday activity and exercise. So instead, I've been using math method. And even early on in my math method, I was having a hard time keeping it below my 148 number. Again, this was because I was really deconditioned and I had to work to start to build my aerobic base up again. But now that I'm starting to build that aerobic base back and I'm starting to realize, hey, I can keep it under 148 a lot easier and I'm even keeping it down on the lower end of my math zone on a lot of my runs, even though I'm actually starting to run a little bit faster. So now I'm starting to think a little bit, okay, can I start to train a little bit more in zone two because I have a little bit more of an aerobic base built up? Now I'll be completely honest, I've tried to run in zone two and I'm still not quite there yet, but I think I'm getting closer. And the reason that I want to try and start to train in zone two is because that is, quote, true polarized training my math zone kind of lands me in a zone three or so. And if you're using a five zone system, then you want to be training primarily on one end and on the other end of those zones. And zone three tends to land you kind of in a, what a lot of purists will call jump mile zone. Now, if you're deconditioned and you're just starting running and you have very little aerobic base and very poor cardiovascular fitness, I don't think there's such a thing as junk miles. And for myself, because I had had long layoffs before, and now I'm starting to kind of get back into it, I don't feel like my math zone was actually junk miles for me. And I still don't think that. I think that it's still very beneficial to run in that, quote, zone three or my mafetone numbers. Now, I think as I continue to improve my cardiovascular fitness and as others continue to improve their cardiovascular fitness, they want to start to aim for a little bit more of that polarization in their training. And that's what I plan on doing. I really plan on starting to bring that heart rate down even more as my cardiovascular fitness continues to improve. But it's not going to improve very much if I'm just running hard and fast all the time. So what I'm trying to do is now I'm starting to live a little bit more in the lower end of my math zone, starting to move a little bit closer to that zone two training to start to retrain my body and my brain and my legs and my muscles, my heart to be able to work more efficiently in those lower heart rate zones. Now, I think I'm probably going to still be using math training for quite some time. I think if you're really deconditioned and you're just kind of coming back after a long layoff or something like that, then you could spend a, about a year in math zone just trying to build that cardiovascular fitness back up before you start to see, you know, the desired results and start to get to the point where you can actually start to run in zone two. 
So let me just kind of wrap all this up for a second. I want to make sure that you guys kind of have a little bit of a guideline. So if you're brand new to running, then just know that your heart rate's probably going to try and shoot up a little bit higher. So zone two may not be real, really realistic, right? So unless you're just walking and now we've talked about this before, it's okay to walk. It really is. And I recommend if you're just starting out doing walk and jog intervals where your jogging maybe takes you up into your maffetone zone and then your walking might bring you back down into zone two. I see no problem with a method like that where you can combine math and zone two. And then as you get to where you can do a little bit more running continuously, I have no problem with sticking with math numbers, even though it's not true polarized training, it's still running with a lower heart rate. It's still in an aerobic zone. So you're still getting the effect that you are desiring, which is to help build that aerobic base. Now, on the other hand, as you get more advanced and you start to kind of outrun math, then I think it's appropriate to start thinking about living a little bit more inside of your zone two. Now you may have to start doing something similar to what you were doing early on with math, where you were doing math running intervals and zone two walking intervals. Well, you may have to even bring that down so that you're doing zone two running intervals and zone one walking intervals. Just know that as you do this, that patience is really, really important. And we've talked about patience when we've talked about math training in the past. So I know that that's not something that's, uh, that's new to you for me to say, be patient as you're building your aerobic capacity. But just know that even as you start to kind of change over from math to zone two, if that's something you want to do, even as you start to do that, you have to be patient and you may start having to run slower than you were when you were doing math training and that's normal. So as I'm thinking about this, how do I plan on implementing zone two into my training now? Well, you guys saw in the last video that I am kind of going a little bit more anaerobic as well. So I'm start, starting to get a little bit more of that higher heart rate and that anaerobic training a little bit, which means I probably need to balance that out with a little bit of polarized training, right? So here's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to do one day a week of anaerobic training, one day a week of zone two training, and then the rest of the days in the week, I'll still live in math training zone. Now, I'm pretty excited to see what the results of this are. I have no idea whether this is going to work out for me, if I'm going to even be able to run in zone two at all, or if I'm just going to end up having to do a bunch of walk jog while transitioning into zone two. And if I do, that's that. That's okay. Um, but if my goal is to improve my ability to pump blood to my working muscles and do it most efficiently, then I need to start working in these low, low heart rate zones and try and train my heart and my muscles to be able to use that heart rate level and still be effective with my running. So again, just to kind of wrap it up, I think Maffetone training and math method is great for beginners and just starting to kind of try and build that aerobic base. And then as you get more trained and more fit, and this may be a year down the road, I think it's important to start to transition a little bit more into zone two so that you can really truly start to polarize your training and not end up running with just a bunch of junk miles. Now, if you guys found this video helpful, then go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys because this is a topic that, you know, I haven't really heard a lot of videos on comparing these two methods. So let me know if this was helpful to you and how do you plan on implementing this information? 
Do you plan on sticking with math? Do you plan on going to zone two? Are you already doing zone two? Are you not doing either and you're just anaerobic all the time? Let me know what your thoughts are and I would love to hear from you guys and respond to any of your comments that you guys leave down below. Now if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and get out there, seek your elite, and I will see you guys next time.